All right, I thought I would make this video really quick. I have so much to do as I stated in my update video, but I had everything out, so I thought I have to get on top of making these videos. So in this video, I'm just gonna explain how I'm preparing for boards question-wise. I'm not gonna go through everything I'm doing, but maybe in um, another video later this week I can do that. But this is just for how I'm using the Cubanks. And right now, I have just started using the Kaplan's Comlex Level 1 Cubank. I am just taking the Comlex. However, I have used USMLE questions to help me prepare. I've been using those, the Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Word Cubank uh, since January. And I've kind of like graduated on now to the Comlex because I need to start practicing kind of format-wise questions for the Comlex as well as like the osteopathic questions that I'll have to answer. So I just started this this week and it's working really well. We had a Kaplan professor come to our class and just talk about kind of studying for it and then also behavioral sciences. And he made a good point of saying like how best to study questions along with studying. And he says, you know, questions, study, questions, study, questions, study. And it's really worked well for me. I tend to remember things better if I get them wrong or if I have to sit in the situation and think through it and maybe get it down to two and have to pick one. And so what I've been doing is three times a week, so usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I try to take a 50 question test, or I think 40 is the max you can pick. Anyways, I used it in the timed form, the unused, and all subjects, all topics, everything. And uh, I do that time test, and after the test is done, I go back and review every single, excuse me, every single answer and even the ones I've gotten right because what I do is I'll read it and say did I get this question right because I guessed correctly or did I actually get this question right because I knew the content I knew the actual answer and so if I look at a pheo or pheo cytochromatoma I can never say that word right and it's like yep I know that yep I know how to treat that and so then when I got to those questions I just moved on I didn't write those down and I felt comfortable if I ever was presented with that again I could easily get those right so the ones I got wrong, I look at, did I get it wrong because I missed information in the question and just misunderstood the question, or did I actually get it wrong because I didn't know the, like, I didn't know the answer, I uh, didn't have the content, I didn't have the, or I didn't, yeah, I just know it. <laughs> so I make a list, so this was actually my Monday's test. I just made a, I already crossed everything out because I studied them, and then huh, it was on the back, it wasn't exactly a great test. I got lucky on some, but again, like I said, I wrote those down too, because if I get lucky on one, this doesn't mean I know it, if I'm faced with it again, I might not get lucky a second time. So, anyways, I make my list, and then the next day, so like, if this was a Monday, on Tuesday, I took my list, and I would have all my books, I have all my books in my office here, and I would just look them up, and I take a piece of paper, let's see if this Monday is... I just take a, uh, it's the start off as a plain sheet of paper, and I just go through. So the first one here is warfarin and um, interaction with antibiotics. So that's in first aid, and I also looked in my farm book and kind of got a clear picture. So I just put warfarin on here. So you just put some information like increases PT and INR, or like that is INR. It's metabolized by the acetochrome P450. There's a lot of drug-drug interactions. Um, and in this case particular, if you do give TMP, SMX, then you would need to decrease your dose of warfarin for that patient. Anyways, now it's just an example of one of them. So I fill up a whole sheet, and I actually have, oh, the light's horrible, um, some on the back. So that was just Mondays. And so anyways, I use so many, I can, so a lot of the stuff actually isn't in first aid. Some of the stuff you can find, like I had projection, reaction formation, um, meniscal tears. I like could not find that anywhere. I finally found it in, I think I had to use my Foundations of Osteopathic Medicine book. Um, I even have like a clinically oriented anatomy and everything. I couldn't find it. One that I could not find, I couldn't believe this, was called Myositis Ossificans. Got the question right, but again, that was lucky. I had no idea what Myositis Ossificans, I guess based off the word, um, but I actually had to Google it. And I have so many books in here and I I don't know, maybe I wasn't looking in the right spot, so I could not find it for the life of me. Um, to let you know what it is, in case you're wondering, it uh, occurs at the quadricep after like a contusion. So let's say a football player gets slammed in the thigh or the anterior thigh from a helmet and they get a contusion, it's really sore, and they don't set aside the correct time to properly 
like ice it and rest it and and not play football and use it until it's got, um, gone down it can actually calcify and then you can see that it can calcify in the muscle about um the belly of the muscle and you can see it on x-ray anyways that was like the case presented to me that's what it is so um so it's kind of fun on Tuesdays I set aside two hours to do that and kind of play hide and seek and try to find all the answers and then I usually look around and I don't just put exactly what the answer is like um I don't have a really great example. oh so on my Wednesday test I had one on spina bifida and I I mean the I had put spina bifida meningocele or maybe I put the other one spina, and then the other one was spina bifida meningomyelocele I'm sorry, a bunch of those names. Um, so anyways, I got that one wrong, but I just didn't put the right answer or the one I got wrong. I actually put all of them. So I have spina bifida occulta, spina bifida meningeal seal, spina bifida meningeal myelocele, and spina bifida myelochysis. Lovely. And then I put the definitions. And then what I'm going to do this weekend, so I'll only have three of those sheets, is spend an hour or two just reviewing those and quizzing myself and covering up, you know, one side and or the other, trying to get the definitions, and just things I had missed. And anyways, that is just how I've been doing questions. It And time-wise, if you're wondering, it takes me, actually takes me less than an hour. <laughs> I fly through the questions, which is probably not good. Sometimes I have like 25 minutes left on the exam. I should probably work on that. Um, so that usually takes less than an hour to do that, and then to actually sit down. And this was just my one from tonight, my Friday exam. So... Uh, get into focus. I'm actually proud of this list. It is very, you know, you can't see that. Thanks to the light. But anyways, there's only a few things on here. Woo, I did well on that test. But that'll probably just take me now an hour to look up all those answers and write out the definitions on my sheets of paper. So all in all, let's see, three times three, six hours. Hour to three. So like eight hours a week spent on actual questions and looking up the questions and writing out the definitions. I'm doing other things like reading first aid and doing my doctors in training bi-weekly questions but yeah that's what I've been doing is we've really been working if anyone else is doing the same thing let me know how it's going or how you've adapted it or how you are doing your questions I'd love to hear it but that's an update on my questions. Um, one thing I wanted to note if anyone's out there taking the USMLE and Comlex and if you've used Kaplan and, and both those cubings is what is your experience with the difference because my percentage percent like averages have gone up by 20 <laughs> I'm not getting you about 20% increase from my USMLE score to my complex so I'm kind of concerned that maybe the Kaplan one doesn't match the complex I don't know but I'd love to hear other people's opinions maybe I've just gotten lucky I mean I've only done I think 15% of the question versus I think I've done over 50% of the USMLE ones but I'd be curious to know if you have any input on that. I would love to hear it. Anyways, that is all. I'm going to go back to studying, and right now I'm going to look up this list that I got wrong tonight. So have a good weekend.